Okay, it's official. I love this building. I've never been in this kind of lifestyle, this bouginess, this penthouse pampering as it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. Welcome to Kuala Lumpur. Good evening and what's going on legends? How are you all this evening? Welcome to a beautiful night in a beautiful condo in a beautiful building in a beautiful city. We are in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia for a really special week of adventures and outings, food, nightlife, city life, mountain life, train life, travel life, uh, some, some pretty important health visits. But for right now, one of the biggest reasons that we're really, really here to enjoy things is the first world opportunities of food. Food and drink, things that we cannot get in the islands, that we cannot get logistically way out in the provinces of the Philippines. We don't mind it, but we do miss it. It's really a comfort and a pleasure to be able to come to a place like Kuala Lumpur, where there are gourmet kitchens and gourmet grocers all over the place, all over the city, where I'm able to get the things that I want and need and crave. Tonight is a very special night because uh, we rented an Airbnb rather than a hotel room or a hostel on this trip so that we had a fully functioning kitchen. Now, granted, it is an Airbnb, so we don't exactly have everything. You know, they don't, I wasn't able to bring my chef's knives. We have one saute pan and one cheap aluminum style Chinese pot. I do have a functioning oven and a full working fridge. That's a little bit of everything we've got. Utensils wise, I've got plastic cutlery. I've got a cutting board this big and I got a knife this big. That's what came with the Airbnb. We're gonna make whatever we make here in this gourmet dinner tonight with what we got. Luckily, it's an absolutely beautiful condo. We've got a view of the entire skyline of the city of Kuala Lumpur. And so I get to watch the city come alive for the evening while my chef's culinary creativity comes back alive here with all of these beautiful first word ingredients. Before I start cooking, I need a drink. So we're going with the 1800 Añejo. Not the top, top of the world shelf tequilas, but around here, this is an amazing blend. So for the wife here, we picked up a really nice Chilean Grand Reserve. Um, this is a Comanier right here. It's really nice red wine. And then for our special guest for the week, Uncle David, we have a frosty and lovely bottle of absolute vodka. His favorite of choice. Bartender 101 begins now. I'm gonna make myself a Cadillac margarita, pour the wife a glass of wine. Enjoy that first margarita with a view of the skyline, which we'll show you here in a second. And then it's time to make steaks. The first step of making steaks though, after I make these drinks is crucial. I need to warm and dry them. So we're gonna cut these out of here, dry them on their individual plates and give them a nice little salting and let them kind of warm up and come to room temperature. I never recommend anyone cooking a steak below room temperature. So just keep that in mind. So for right now, they're resting and warming. Uh, the rest of the ingredients are here in front of you. You can see I've got some fresh rosemary here. I've got a little bit of fresh dill, some Greek yogurt, some pistachios. I've got the basic fruit accoutrement here. Really nice thin green asparagus from Thailand. And I've got some wonderful Japanese cucumbers here. Garlic, white onion, and then I've got some red and green coral on the head already so that they stay nice and fresh. I've also got a really nice little bit of Brazilian butter here. This one here is smoked cypress salt, and I'll be making a Greek pistachio and dill butter to roll over the steaks after I braise them. So now you're really gonna see the smile come out on me because it's time to party. But before I make mine, obviously it's time to pop a bottle for the wife, ladies first, of course, and this needs to breathe for a moment. And... pop. Let the wife behind the scenes smell that. That smells really good. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and let that breathe. I need some ice. Uh, cut open a big water bottle. This will be my shaker prep glass here to actually prepare the margarita. Two for the squeeze, just like that. One for the garnish. Boom, got my garnish ready to go, got my squeeze ready to go. I did find organic 100% pure agave, blue agave. Very crucial for the Cadillac. So we'll go ahead and we'll line the ice with the agave right now. There we go. Pour a little bit in the mix. 
I'm cheating. I did not find triple sec and I'm not really a fan of, of store-bought triple sec. I like to make my own. Triple sec is traditionally a orange liqueur. One of my favorite versions of triple sec is one that I came up with in the bars about 15 years ago and that's a blood orange triple sec that I make myself in the kitchens of my own restaurants and bars. I wasn't able to find any of that but I was able to find San Pellegrino blood orange sparkling. Now of course triple sec itself is technically alcoholic in its form. This is non-alcoholic so you would call this margarita a little bit lighter but it's not because we'll just add more tequila. 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 Pop that Pellegrino. That's the best San Pellegrino I've ever tasted. This is gonna be just an absolute world-class margarita. First, the squeeze. Do not have a juicer, so improvising. Make do with what you got around here. That is the way. All right, and then we're gonna go with one orange for the squeeze. Tequila. One, two, three, four. I'm pouring light today. And now we'll go with the blood orange. Right about there. Improvise, baby. The margarita is ready to go. And just go like that. Boom, perfect. And just enough to put a teaser in a glass because you know the wife's gonna wanna try it here in about five seconds, so. Take my orange slice, take my lime wedge, and ladies and gentlemen, a top shelf Cadillac blood orange margarita. That's phenomenal. Just take a look at that. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, that's so good. All right. And of course, I already brought out the sample glass for the wife, because you know how it's gonna go. You're a smart man. Yep. I do warn you though, this might make your wine taste different. She's been warned. <laughs> oh, that smells like oranges. That's a Cadillac margarita. <laughs> mm. Oh man, that's good. I'm gonna make another round of them so they're on the ready. But before I do that, I'm gonna peel these steaks, let them rest and dry and salt for a little while, and then we'll drink for a minute. First things first on the cooking side of things while we're drinking. Uh. Excuse me. So I got the meat out, I got it drying. What I was able to find is some garlic pepper seasoning and some traditional sea salt. Steaks look wonderful, fat looks great. So we've got them salted on one side. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip them. And you see how I'm doubling down on these paper towels so that I'm utilizing all of it. And another round of salt. And the garlic pepper. The steaks are marinating and drying there for a little bit and warming up to room temperature. We're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna show you guys the view here from this condo, which is absolutely world-class. The meat's resting, the rest of dinner's prep, prepped up and ready to go. All I have to do is execute now. We got our drinks, the wife's got her wine, Uncle David's got his drink, I got my top shelf Cadillac blood orange margarita. We gotta show you the city. This is, this is what it's all about, guys. <sighs> Take a look at that. This is Kuala Lumpur, one of the most culturally diverse melting pot of language, religion, and genres of food in the world. You can find in every single mall, food venue, or villa, or plaza in this city, you can find a little bit of everything from all over the world. Down below us right now in the, in the rooftop plaza and promenade, there's a night market with food stalls and vendors, music on the grass, our favorite parts of the city, Central, KLCC, and Bukit Bintang right in front of us. Patronus Towers to the right, Stratosphere to the left. It really, really is a beautiful place. What do you think, babe? I'm happy. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You're happy? Yeah. Oh. Where's your glass? It's over here. You best go get it, girl. I'm letting my wine really breathe for a minute. Well, we need to do some cheersing. We do. Come on now. Bring that cute butt over here. Y'all, we got some cheese today. 
OMG. <laughs> cheese. OM cheese. OM cheese. Cheers. Cheers, baby. Love you. I love you. Oh yeah, I know it's a little dark, but that's better that way. It's it's just what it's all about, you guys. All right, I don't have the new S23 with a thousand yard range, but let me see if I can show you this 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 new mega tower over here. Look at that, the the illuminations going on it. Look at that. That's really really cool. Let me give you a little close up here. What I was talking about with koala. Look at this. So one of our favorite places in the world is Food Street, right down here. It starts right there and goes about three blocks that way. And then Lot 10 is over here behind these buildings. And then it goes all the way to KLCC and Central here, where the Twin Towers are at Patronus. This is just unbelievable. And then look at this, music in the park. How amazing is that? Like, if you, if you stayed in an apartment like this, you don't even need to leave. You have a show. You have dinner and a show right here. Grocery like, store downstairs. You do all your shopping. Oh, you need new clothes? You rip the hole in your jeans? You can go downstairs, buy a new pair of jeans. You can go downstairs. You don't want to cook? You can go to one of the restaurants. You can go to an all-you-can-eat buffet downstairs for 10 U.S. dollars. Yeah. It's... That's pretty dangerous. Yeah, so this whole row here, it's hard to see right now. I'll lean out with the, with the camera. This whole row is all fine dining and restaurants and bars. All of this. And then all of this underneath here is a mall, a mega mall, grocery store and complex, French bakery, artisan bakery. And then on the rooftop, look at this. Kuala Lumpur, you guys. Okay, round two's down the gullet. Just crushing one pistachio at a time. <laughs> and that is what it takes to get to this pistachio and Greek yogurt that I will be making to pair with the steaks. I'm gonna go ahead and add it into the bowl here. Next thing I'm gonna get out is a little bit of the dill. Go ahead and just Pluck this down to what I need. Some of the smaller stems are obviously okay. Larger stems are not really favorable. Now again, this is the only knife I have and my fingers are thicker than the blade. So being able to do a, fear, a full <laughs> chop, I'm actually gonna have to come to the edge of the counter here just to get a chop and a mince on this dill. Luckily this knife was brand new um, semi brand new when we came here because the building is semi brand new. That will be going in with the pistachios. All right, one more mince on the garlic here, and then we're gonna do just a little bit of the garlic pepper because I want the pepper, and I already have the garlic. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with this plain Greek yogurt. Go ahead and add that in there. And when I char these steaks, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is lay a blanket of this down underneath and the steaks will actually rest on this. So that is a Greek pistachio dill garlic blend there with just a slight bit of pepper. Wow, that little bit of citrus that I squeezed in there, you can't smell it, you probably can't taste it. Um, it's just in there to start adding the acidity that opens up the pores of all the herbs that I put in there. Boom, good to go. To cut to the chase because you've seen me cut plenty of onions and garlic in the past, I've got some chopped sweet white onion and some garlic minced up right here. I've got butter roaring in the pan. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is caramelize these for a topping base before and get the pan nice and seasoned before I drop the steaks in there and then drop the expensive butter and the rosemary. One of the real upsides of being first world here is real butter. <laughs> and I mean real butter. It smells so good. I second that. It smells delicious. All right. 
Boom. So what we'll do here is we'll pluck a little bit of rosemary and do the old school way here. I'm just gonna put it in my hand, give it a little spin. Boom. Get a little bit more in the hand. Give it a little spin. Boom. Okay, garlic, butter, onion, rosemary. I'm gonna let that caramelize for a little bit, and then we'll be right back. All right, so now that that's caramelizing and seasoning, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna add the asparagus in and let that cook off with it, and then I will separate them before the final plating. And just roll them in there like that. Boom. While I finish getting dinner ready, let's hop on over and do a full tour of the rest of the condominium and the rest of the top of the tower where the pool, the spa, and all the cool amenities are. You have to see this to believe it. For me, as a little island boy, it really was a wild experience. All right, super excited. Top floor, 35th, pool time. Okay. Wow. Holy gorgeous. Under maintenance. Wow. Photo opportunities. So where's the poo? Look at this, y'all. Wow. It's so amazing. Uh, there's a reading room. There's a game room over here. Sounds like laundry. Wow. And you can reserve this for parties. Ooh, I can host rooftop dinners? That's cool. Okay. Oh, I love the table. Hold on, let me get that face. Oh, wow. Uh, there's a barbecue, folks. There is a rooftop barbecue. Wow, look at this. There's another grill. Do they work? Can we grill up here? We can. So I can come up here and charbroil some steaks, huh? Yeah. Rooftop dinners. Let's just have our The use of there. the barbecue and Aryan grill are by reservation only. Huh. Okay. Wow. Garden pavilion, laundry service, garden pavilion again, private hangout rooms, huh? Wow. I'm a Florida boy from the flatland swamps of the south. This is all so new and so foreign to me. I mean, look at this staircase. It just goes up and up and up. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Wow. Wow. These are cool little areas to hang. Very interesting. Oh, we got off on the wrong floor. Wow. Very cool. Wow. All right, round number two. That was cool. I'm glad we got off on the wrong floor. Yeah. Here we go. 35th floor. Top of the world, folks. Okay. That's pretty amazing. I thought that was Chris right there with the hat on for a second. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow. The views on both sides. So you really can see both sides of town. That's really impressive. I mean, technically you have 360 aerial views. You can go across the whole thing, all the way around. 
360 aerial views of the whole town. It's truly unbelievable. But take a look at this, y'all. The queen on her high throne. Wow. Hey, baby, how you doing? <laughs> You're such a dork. Oh, I'm such a dork, huh? Yeah. She says that when I'm being romantic and cheesy. I say when you're being cheesy. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think? I think this is great. Let's pack our bags and move. <sighs> One of us is dead set. One of us isn't. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I can't hate being able to come up here and swim laps every morning. You do free dive training up here, you could do laps, but can't surf, can't fish. No, but the Mintawas is one flight and one ferry right away. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And then five grand for a cabin for a week. Sleep on the beach. Okay. I cannot wait to see you willing to sleep on a beach. <laughs> cannot wait. <laughs> You just gotta put up with my smell. Uh, I don't care about the smell. I care about you whining and complaining about sand fleas and mosquitoes. Guess we'll just pack a tent and some netting for you, huh? Oh yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what it's all about. Uh oh, illegal. Oh, please don't splash. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh, oh. Turn around. Hello. Oh. 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 Uh. Okay. That's what goggles are for, to see, right? Oh. oh, wow. Okay. All right. Children. Wow. Okay. Time to put the phone away for a little bit and enjoy our lifestyle here. It's just amazing, you guys. We'll see you here in a little bit. Perfect size and diameter, so I knew it did not need to cook long, and I do not like overcooking it because it turns into this like shoestring leather, and nobody likes that with their asparagus. So what we're doing now is we're just pulling it out. I mean, I don't have tongs, but I do have a pair of chopsticks, so that's all the Japanese chef needs. Boom. Okay, so I've got the seasoned butter and oil in the pan. I'm gonna leave the asparagus right here to rest. I'm gonna leave this char right here. This butter is made with smoked cypress salt. Super, super stoked for this. Boom. Oh, wow. What a flavor. Oh my God. Okay, right there. Go ahead and take my first steaks. Right in. Oh, just like that. Okay, drop a stick of rosemary or two right in the middle. These steaks are on the thinner side, so I do not need to cook them very long. All right, now what I want to do is I want to bring the rosemary down. Okay, and I'm going to add more rosemary. Now what I'm going to do is kind of tricky on, a, on an induction top, more or less efficient to do with a flame or a broiler, but we're gonna go ahead and go like this, okay? And what I'm doing here is basting and continuing to cook on both sides and allowing the butter to maneuver all around and help break down the fats and, whoa, so sorry, are you okay? Yeah, that didn't get on me. Good. I'm not making a mess, I'm not having fun as a chef. All right, so it's an induction top, so unfortunately I have to put it back down and let it ride for a minute. It is what it is. And they're done. I want nothing else to do with them besides let them rest. Just like that. I'm gonna grab them. I'm gonna pull them off. Let them rest. And rosemary is another thing that burns, so we are gonna pull off the rosemary we just used. Because I don't want it burning. And believe it or not, I'm gonna pull the butter off as well. 
and I'll be adding more butter. So that butter there will go like this. And we let it rest. We'll let that cook for just about a minute and a half before I flip them again. Good, Bubba. Does tequila get you fired up? Let's get fired up. We are fired up. Okay. All right. Steaks have had their two minutes. Time to flip. Let's go there. Butter. Done. Resting. 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 Yes, sir. Yummy, yummy, yummy for my tummy. Mm. That's what's up. Action. All right. Take a little bit of this Greek yogurt mix. Go ahead and take a little bit of these charred onions and garlic. And just sprinkle them underneath. you guys so I've got a fresh fresh spring salad here I've got a little bit of pistachio uh, Japanese cucumbers a little bit of the red and the green char uh, and some sliced uh, navel oranges and I've got this beautiful Greek yogurt and olive oil that we're gonna be putting with it and then I've got our steak dinner so we're gonna go ahead and set the table you guys traditional Americana steak asparagus fresh spring salad beautiful little Greek Greek uh, beautiful little Greek toppings underneath and uh, fresh Cadillac margaritas to go with it it is what it is short sweet and simple and sexy it's how I like to cook you don't really need a lot and yes there's no carbs in this meal so it is what it is. Cheers. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you'd like to see more videos and more how-to cooking episodes like this, please comment below and let me know. Make sure to head over to our Facebook as well. Let me know what you think of this episode. Until next time, legends. Cheers. First bite of steak in a year and a half. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Minimal. This is really close to as good as in lamb chops last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's one in the morning on our last night here. And honestly, I can't go to bed because I know it's not going to be anytime soon that I get to see this again and experience this again. The city truly has a place in my heart forever and always. It's absolutely unbelievable. I will always love it. I will always cherish this city. <sighs> Kuala Lumpur, you are a wild, sexy beast.